Welcome to What's Treading with Tire Review. I'm Maddie Weiner. On today's episode, we're joined by Hollow Tires. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Maddie. Happy to be Thank here. Thank you. Happy to be here as well. Thank you. So just last year, I know Apollo Tires introduced its Bredestein brand of PLT tires to the North American market, and the company has launched uh, two tires specifically for the North American market this year. So why has Apollo taken such an aggressive strategy for the North American market? Uh, thanks, Maddie. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked that. So at, at Apollo in 2016, we essentially identified North America, specifically United States, as our next home market. And we have a completely different approach when it comes to home markets. We have an approach of entrenchment. So we get into the market, we make our mark, we do all the due diligence, and we really commit ourselves to the market, whether it's in terms of resources on R&D, employees, infrastructure, everything. And that's exactly what we did for United States as well. Apollo, in its, as an organization, it's got two brands, and for both of them, US is a massive opportunity. Fred is being the only legitimate, I would say, tier one brand in the entire world that does not exist in United States. And we wanted it to give it its rightful place. So that's, that's why we have not held back any punches, and we are coming in with a very, very serious product plan and a commercial strategy. Interesting. And I know, you know, now is such an interesting time in the world with the coronavirus pandemic. Has the company encountered any challenges with employing its strategy in North America due to the coronavirus? For sure. In the coronavirus, I think, took everybody by a little bit of surprise. But from our side, we view this as a massive opportunity. We've, in fact, hastened and fast-tracked all our product development and all our introductions into US. We see this as a massive opportunity. There is a set of customers and dealers who are not willing to, let's say, take new portfolios or take new brands on board. At the same point of time, there are the more progressive ones who want to achieve their last year's margins and they want to grow further, and they are actively looking at changing their brand portfolios. So which opens up a lot of opportunities for us. So yeah, for us, it, it hasn't really been a challenge. It's opened up more opportunities, actually. Very interesting. OK, well, that's great. So I know so far the company has launched two tires, like I said, for the North American market under the Redestein brand, uh, the Hypertrack, which is a UHP all-season tire, and the Windtrack, a winter tire. Um, can one of you briefly explain what those are and the performance characteristics of each, as well as, you know, for dealers, maybe pinpoint who the ideal customer for both of these new tires might be? Thanks, uh, thanks for the, the, this uh, question. That is very interesting for us. Hypertrack uh, is uh, targeted to the ultra high performance all season segment uh, for US. The customer in uh, UHP or season segment uh, expect a very high levels of dry and wet handling, shorter braking distance, quick and precise steering with a good level of no mobility. Based on market research and benchmarking testing, we identified top wet performance, braking handling, hydroplaning as a key target for our development journey. Climate, terrain, vehicle diversity in uh, American markets makes uh, the UHP all season as one of the most technologically challenging segment in the tire industry. The hypertrack performance are really interesting. By leveraging on our global expertise, Combined with uh, the local focus uh, on the North American market, our R&D team has delivered a tire that uh, we are confident sets uh, new standards for the all season UHP category. Hypertrack has been developed to be the market leader in wet performance. The thread compound is based on uh, optimized polymer blend with uh, I silica filler for better wet, attract, wet attraction. The tire contour 
is designed to optimize the footprint pressure distribution, which benefits uniform thread wear and hydroplaning. A symmetric thread pattern with a wider outer shoulder for faster response during cornering and longitudinal grooves to enhance safety against hydroplaning. And multi pitch thread, that is a design feature to optimize the acoustic comfort. As well, the optimized sipes layout and dedicated compound offers even snow mobility for all season application. Across four seasons, the final product was validated with extensive testing conducted by third parties, shows that HyperTrack is not only great in wet performance, but also one of the most well-balanced tire in the North American market for UHP all season segment. We conducted as well testing on the worn tire to evaluate the performance all over the tire life and the results confirmed the hyper track excellence against the reference competitors. Twin track, that is the second product line that we are launching in the US market, is a specialized, a specialized winter tire for a high performance segment providing a very good snow performance, traction and handling, with a very good balance of wet performance as well. The improvement uh, performance versus the previous generation of winter tires is uh, very interesting, more than 10% in uh, wet uh, grip, 10% better in uh, hydroplaning, and uh, more than 20% higher mileage. Threadwear. The improved design is enhancing all of these performances, uh, leveraging mainly on a dedicated uh, high technology compound that is uh, leveraging on the best material that are available on the market. These are the two products that uh, we have been launching in, uh, in the US market. You all have designed, you know, the hyper track and the wind track specifically for the North American uh, consumer. So can you describe a little bit more about that? You know, how Redestein is designing and really concentrating their tires for the North American consumer and their needs? Yes, uh, it's a pleasure to, to describe that. Of course, the uh, North American market has uh, some specific requirement in terms of uh, tire performance. Our development journey to US market started in 2016. We created a fully focused team on US development with high skill level and experience in the North American tire market. We structured a customer, a structured customer expectation analysis was even the foundation for defining a development direction. Multiple product developments started to address uh, all important uh, US tire market segments, targeting to deliver performance at level of best in class uh, tier one competitors. Including uh, HyperTrack, we are launching seven product lines uh, for the US. Optimum blend of uh, design, materials, and tire layout is the key factor for achieving the target performance for the new product in the US market. Of course, simulations and extensive tire testing plays a significant role to develop top class performance in an efficient way. Testing on dedicated US proving grounds ensures that the product meets all the market requirements. In 2019, we introduced in the US market two product lines targeting winter ultra high performance and all weather ultra high performance segments. The two product lines are the Wintrack Pro and the Quadra Pro. In the first year of introduction, both Quadra Pro and Wintrack Pro were very well received by the North American market. Quadra Pro 
ranked as number one by Tire Rack in Grand Touring All Season segments and was rated as recommended by Consumer Report in the UHP All Season segment. Wintra Pro was rated number one by Consumer Reports in the Performance Winter segment. And this is uh, given to the, the team, the R&D team, the marketing team. Uh, it makes a very, all of us are very proud about the performance that we were able to uh, deliver. Definitely, the investment on US product is the single largest investment in product development in our company history for entering in a new market. Very interesting. And I'm, you know, that shows uh, the company's dedication to this market for sure. Um, so I, I know, like you said, there's more to come um, for the Redestein brand for the North American market. Uh, this year in particular, uh, can either of you summarize what some of those uh, new tires are for our listeners? Absolutely, Maddie. There is lots to come. So including the Hypertrack, which is the all-season ultra-high-performance tire recently launched, we would be launching seven product lines. So essentially, you're looking at a product launch every three months. So to take you through it specifically, in the year of 2020, after Hypertrack, we're launching the high performance all season tire, which covers the car and CUV category. Then we launched the all terrain, both in P and LT constructions. Next year, we start off with the highway terrain tire, again, both in P and LT construction, and also we intend to launch the standard performance all season tire. Besides that, there will be successors of our existing ranges, whether it's in summer or whether the whether the all season tires need to be renewed in their successive uh, lives. And finally, in CY22, we're launching the mud terrain tire. So that's that is kind of the journey. But that when you look at it in total, that's what the range would start looking like a complete coverage and especially in the uhp segment you're talking about an 80 percent market coverage so what you're looking at is the fredestein brand goes from its fairly limited coverage from two months ago to an 80 percent coverage in barely 24 months so it lots lots coming that way yeah, definitely a very aggressive strategy for um, product launches in the North American market. Um, I know Redestein uh, also launched new branding this year. Lots of news uh, coming from this brand. Uh, can you describe what this rebranding represents for Redestein? The brand has gone for a new visual identity in its 111th year presence. The brand has gone back to its roots to see and brand idea being refined by design. On four pillars, the heritage legacy, the performance edge, the design thinking, and being distinctly European. The brand went further and you could see that the new visual identity is hugely dynamic and it displays the energy that the Fredestein brand brings on brings on board, especially with its journey lines, very vibrant colors. In fact, coincidentally, you know, they, they're the same as the American flag. We feel that this, this whole retail identity really brings forward the attributes of the brand and positions it and helps the, our partners position it correctly to the end users. Yeah, you will be seeing a lot of understand brand and this identity also makes it possible to leverage all the new age media and the social media channels and all the traditional media channels in the most effective and efficient way, thereby bringing forward the brand attributes. Kind of staying on this uh, path of marketing, uh, I'm curious, how have you all been marketing your products in the North American market, especially as economies had to shut down due to the coronavirus? 
most of our focus has remained on using the digital medium. So we've launched all our social media initiatives during this time. All the trainings and product launches are also being visualized in a digital manner. So it's it's been quite an awakening. It has led us to reevaluate our media planning. And I must say that the results are quite encouraging. So for dealers in North America, what can they expect from the company in the remainder of the year? And what do you want dealers to know um, about the Bredestein brand, especially during this difficult time? First and foremost, I think the dealers should understand that, that we are looking for a few but long-term business partners. What they can expect out of us is a refreshing approach to the market uncomplicated, easy to do business with, basically based on three key pillars, partnership, product excellence, and profitability. We are going to pick up this launch in every aspect. There will be three new products coming in this just this year. You'll see enhanced investments in marketing. You already see the new visual identity. You would see us across media channels more and more. It has already started moving up or we've started upping the game here. Continuous investments in terms of infrastructure and manpower. And are, we are absolutely headstrong about having very transparent and uncluttered policies for the dealers because we honestly feel that that's a differentiator in the marketplace. And we think that the dealers his life has already been complicated by just too complex commercial offers and just too much to manage. And we just want to be a breath of fresh air in this kind of a situation. Um, now, kind of switch, switching back to the coronavirus pandemic, um, just as a whole, looking at the industry, how do you feel from you know where you all are sitting that the industry will fare this pandemic? Of course, it's tough times. It is tough times, but it also brings forward a lot of opportunities. I think that the industry is going to weather the storm. Uh, but clearly, we see data, a lot of data to show that there, there seems to be an upswing in the demand on the consumer side. At the same point in time, we see certain categories which are less affected versus others. So you see more, more effect on PCLT and lesser on commercial vehicle tires or off-highway tires and agri sector. You see also in various parts of the channel. So you see more effect on the retail, but lesser effect on e-commerce players or distributors and wholesalers. It's all got to do with what's happening in the dynamics. And there are opportunities being thrown up in the demand supply gaps at an SKU level in product category levels. So the people who are really tuned in for them, this is a massive opportunity, and I think those ones will come on top at the end of it. And that rule applies at dealers, channel partners, and even manufacturers for that matter. As I mentioned in the beginning of the, of the interview that in the dealer community, we clearly see these two broad. I mean, there are many buckets, but let's say a broad segmentation. There are the ones who just do not want to check their brand portfolios, would not like to bring a new brand on board. At the same point of time, there are the others, the more progressive ones, who are actively looking at their brand portfolios and see this as a huge opportunity to enhance their margins and even turnovers by bringing in new products and new categories on board. And I think for those are the ones who are going to make it better, who will end up better on this. And those are the ones who are essentially are our ideal partners so yeah that is our reading of the situation yes tough one but not so bad there are opportunities yeah there are opportunities for sure um now my last question to you both uh recently i know the u.s commerce department opened an investigation into vehicle tire imports coming from thailand taiwan south korea and vietnam if if there are um duties placed on tires from those countries, uh, will, will it uh, impact the company? It won't impact us at all because our manufacturing base is essentially out of Europe and India. We manufacture in any of the countries that are part of this investigation. 
And as a result of this, we are seeing a heightened interest from the dealer community because we are looking at alternative brands. So we do see an uptick in, in the inquiries for the brand. And that's that's essentially where it is right now. Well, I know we'll be following that at uh, tirereview.com, uh, you know, for uh, in, in uh, updates on that situation. But I, I want to thank you both for your time today. I, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank Maddie. You. Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure.